Um, we've been wanting, there's a number of historic milestones on our database and um, we've been talking about doing one for the longest time and then kudos to Paul Highfield, our board member, who decided to make this one the first one. And next year, what are we doing next year? The pink triangle, the story of the pink triangle next year. Um, so I'm going to start out, it's, it, uh, most of you here probably know pretty much what you need to know about Stonewall. Um, we consulted with a variety of historians and academics on this, and uh, one of whom we have the pleasure of welcoming here, Dr. Beth Kelly from DePaul University. I hope know that today is National Coming Out Day, right? Yes. Oh. Well, I'm one of those folks who was out before Stonewall. And what I bet you don't know is that being out prior to 1969 meant something very different than it does today. It doesn't mean that I'm standing here in the middle of Halstead Street saying, I'm a big old dyke and I'm proud. <laughs> it meant that you hoped you guessed right when you thought you had encountered somebody like you and you very tentatively and very hesitantly and generally rather incoherently told them that you were that way and hoped they'd get it and hoped they'd be your friend or more than a friend. That's what the world was, one big closet. On the evenings of June 27th and 28th, 1969, a normal raid on a mafia-owned gay bar in Greenwich Village's Sheridan Square didn't go as the police and the alcohol and tobacco people thought that it would. The drag queens, the biker dykes, the academics, the guys who were just there for a drink, on a weekend night, fought back. And in the streets of Greenwich Village for four nights, gays, we would have said at the time, LGBT people we say today, fought back, rioted, and resisted. Now, the Stonewall riots are often taken as the beginning of the movement. It wasn't. It wouldn't have happened if there hadn't been at least a century, maybe more, of people trying to organize, trying to make cases for equality of rights. One of them right here in Chicago, our own Henry Gerber. If you don't know about him, you should know about him. So the Stonewall riots aren't the beginning of our movement, but to paraphrase Winston Churchill, they certainly marked the end of the beginning. It's after the Stonewall Riots, that gay liberation, gay rights, LGBT rights, political activism, agitation, began in earnest. And finally, in the last 20 years or so, has been taken very, very seriously. So Stonewall was the end of the beginning, and look where that beginning has taken us today. Thank you very much. Well okay, I'd like uh, Paul and Ron. Ron, please come up and say a few words about the sponsorship. Uh, so when Stonewall, again, was a candidate for the Legacy Walk, I became very passionate about it. Um, it it's that that event that has given us the opportunity to have the Legacy Walk, quite honestly, for me. Um, and it's just, I think it's a great addition to the Legacy Walk. And again, to Victor's point, it's, it, we have an event on the Legacy Walk. We have a, a, some amazing biographies. We have 29 amazing biographies on the Legacy Walk. This provides us that event that, it's criti that was critical to all, to all of us. Um, so without further ado, we'd just like to turn it over to my friend Ron, dear friend Ron, who's also a sponsor of this plaque. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank every board member on the Legacy Project for not only this plaque, but for all the plaques on here. I think they deserve a round of applause. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, legwork and a lot of their time that's spent going into these plaques. Not just making the plaques, but raising donations, securing parties, securing funds. So um, that's much appreciated for every board member. 
Um, second of all, I'd like to thank um, the nameless people that, um, from that, that momentous time in June of 1969 um, who fought for our rights. They set up movement in motion that you know changed the LGBT um, movement for, for, for people since then. Um, since then. So I'd like to thank them as well. And, um, proud to sponsor this plaque. It's, it's a momentous time in, in our nation's history. And um, without further ado, let's unveil the plaque. Who's doing the reading? Hi. 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 You're doing it. What's your last name? Reed Essex, Lincoln Park High School. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, law enforcement officials kept track of suspected homosexuals and the places that catered to them. Police regularly raided bars, seizing alcohol, and shutting down establishments. It was not uncommon for the people arrested during these raids to be exposed in newspapers, fired from their jobs, jailed, or confined to mental institutions. On June 27, 1969, about 200 patients packed New York City's Stonewall Inn. In the early morning hours of June 28, the police attempted a large-scale raid on the mafia-owned gay club. No one, not the police, or the people that they were targeting, knew what was about to happen. While the police waited for patrol wagons to cart away the, suspect, the arrested suspects and seized alcohol, the bar's patrons began to resist. Men refused to show their IDs, and those in drag refused to accompany female officers to a bathroom to have their gender confirmed. The mood gradually turned from somber resignation to camp humor to angry shouts. When a lesbian arrested in, inside the bar was brutalized while being placed in a police car, rage exploded among the several hundred people who had gathered in an uncharacteristic mob on the street. As the crowd erupted, the arresting officers, who were outnumbered more than 50 to 1, barricaded themselves inside the bar. Within hours, over 1,000 people arrived, and five more days of rioting engulfed the streets surrounding the club. Though the events of that immortal night were neither the first protest actions nor the first clashes between the police and LGBT people in U.S., the, night, the unique confluence of rage and circumstances at the Stonewall Inn are considered the flashpoint that launched the modern LGBT civil rights movement. Each year, the world's LGBT communities unite to celebrate June as Pride Month, with hundreds of parades to commemorate the day when the most marginal elements of the LGBT community, homeless street youth and transgender persons, sparked an uprising that rejected decades of non-confrontation, fear, and oppression to declare their outrage in one unmistakable voice that resonates to this day. Stonewall, the riot that started the revolution. Okay, we're heading north. 